There's two types of bone, or osseous tissue, spongy bone, and compact bone. How do we get to this point? There's four types of tissue in the body, epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous. When we look at connective tissue, there's three types of connective tissue. Connective tissue proper, we have three types of dense and three types of loose. Connective tissue fluid, which is my blood and my lymph. And then connective tissue that's supporting. So our supporting connective tissue is cartilage and bone. Three types of cartilage, elastic, hyaline, and fibrocartilage. Now we're looking at bone. Two specific types, spongy and compact. They tell you what they are by their appearance. Spongy is spongy like the sponge on your sink when you're washing dishes, that it's porous, that it allows something to go through it. I can't see through it, but I know the, the water and the soap will go through it, and that's similar to what we see blood in bones, that we fill this area with blood. Versus compact is now solid, more like the wall to give me the structural support. So it's more densely packed cells. When we look at the model here, this is referring to an osteon model, and then it's got spongy bone to it. So as we look at the outer cover, remember that dense fibrous connective tissue is the periosteum. So this is the outside of the bone, the periosteum. And as I move inward, then we're looking at compact bone. So this is all compact. And then once it gets to where it's more like appearance of a sponge, this is spongy bone. So let's first look at the compact bone. When I look at compact bone, it's organized into a bunch of functional units that we call an osteon. So each of these circles in circles within circles are called osteons. And you can see when I pull one up and it's going the length of a long bone, that the way the fibers move is it crosses this way and then it twists this way and this twists this way. So that complementary structure and how it changes every circle within it, the direction it's going, gives me that shock compression strength for the bone. So when I look at one osteon, what we're showing here is it's got a middle section here to where I have blood supply, lymph supply, nerve supply. This is called the central canal or haversion canal. So it's bringing in all the supplies. So on the side here, they're showing one that's opened up because we're constantly using this for blood formation and moving materials throughout our body. Bones are very useful to structure support, but there's a lot of things that are moving in and out. So when I look at the central canal, then it expands out, and you can see it's a circle within a circle within a circle within a circle. Those are called concentric lamellae, and it's basically how they've been building. And they'll circle around each other with the blood supply to keep forming those circles. This gives me an osteon. And the cells around it, what I tried to indicate with those dark dots, are the osteocytes or osteocytes that would be in a bubble called the lacunae. And the way they interconnect are these little lines here, and these little lines are called canaliculi, little canals, canaliculi, that help connect cell to cell. So it's that communication point where we can expand and use this as a way to move materials. And when I look on the sides, you can see the strength, what's left over from building my osteons. These lines are called interstitial lamellae, interstitial lamellae. So it's the way it's been formed to give me the structural support for compact bone. When I pull over and look at the slide, when I look at this, this is one nice central canal, that dark dot in the center, central canal, central canal. So those are indicating my osteon. So if I look at one osteon, it's got a circle within a circle within a circle within a circle. Hard to see it on the histology, but some are better if we go on a higher magnification. But I can see almost like it looks like a tree trunk or a dartboard to where it's just a circle within a circle. These dark dots that circle around, these are all my osteocytes and the lacunae. And they're connected with all these faint lines and they look like eyelashes or sun rays. But they're real faint through here and these are all the canaliculi. And as I create these circles, these are concentric lamellae. I put all these osteons together and I'm getting compact bone. Versus when we pull over to spongy bone, spongy bone we tend to see more in the epiphysis and compact bone we see more in the diaphysis for that strength. So spongy bone is porous. So if I show on this slide here, it's these pinkish rivers here. 
and it's a lower magnification, but I'm looking at the spongy nature of it. The darker purple inside is some of our blood or blood marrow or red bone marrow that fills in those spaces. Just like I talked about the sponge at your sink, that we're filling those spaces for a reason. So when I look at the lighter pink rivers, this is all spongy bone that's been formed. So if we went on a higher magnification, in the middle, I would see osteocytes, and they'd be in the lacunae, the bubble that houses them. Towards the edge of the tissue, I'm going to see more osteoblasts, because they're contributing to the formation of all of these structures that we call trabeculae. So I have osteoblasts, the cells towards the edge, in the middle. I know it's, we have to go on a higher magnification to see that, but the cells, the tiny little dots through here, these are osteocytes in the middle. They're helping to form the spicules, which are the little struts that form the spicules, which are the little struts that give me trabeculae, which is the functional piece of spongy bone. So all of these little pieces are these pink pieces here. So the difference between spongy and compact is not a location, same chemical composition, it's just how they're created and developed. So when I see my tree trunks, I know I'm looking at compact bone. When I see these pink rivers with the blood in between, I know I'm looking at spongy bone, two types of osseous tissue.